Hi everyone, welcome. In this lecture, we will speak about artificial intelligence, elections, and media information literacy. A few figures as we start. By 2026, researchers predict that as much as 90% of online content may be synthetically generated. And this also means that there will also be a growth of synthetically generated content intended to mislead people. In, order, in other words, AI generated disinformation, for instance, deepfakes. This AI technology has become so advanced that everyone can create seemingly real images or videos just by fine tuning the right text prompt. Over the recent years, the use of deepfakes has undergone a staggering growth. Between 2022 and 2023, there has been a tenfold increase in the number of deepfakes detected globally across all industries, while the amount of deepfakes shared online doubles every six months. In this context, the digital safety of users is not the only thing at stake. Our right to be informed, as well as our capacity to make independent choices, are also jeopardized when everyone can use deepfake to change the, the, the voices of politicians and let them say anything they want. There are many um, instances in recent elections where deepfakes and bots have spread false information, including on chatting platforms. And these deepfakes or this uh, misinformation, disinformation, and not only um, aimed at spreading or discrediting and discrediting political candidates or electoral institutions, but they are also aimed at sowing discords and deepening social tensions and can even lead to conflict and violence. Um, I know that in previous models of this course, you've already addressed the issue of disinformation and AI. But in this short lecture, rather than focusing on the threats to elections that are generated by artificial intelligence, we will talk about the responses that, uh, to such threats and how artificial intelligence can be an ally instead. But for AI to be an ally, people need to have media and information literacy skills, including AI literacy. That's why at UNESCO, we have dedicated programs that are aiming at empowering users with the skills they need to navigate the online, uh, online uh, environment, information environment that is becoming increasingly complex. But what does it mean uh, when, what is it concretely media and information literacy? In the same way that literacy enables people to read and understand written text, and for instance, to grasp the difference between poetry, different genre, fiction, non-fiction, poetry, NIL equips uh, citizens with the skills um, they need to create, to critically uh, evaluate and distinguish different, between different types of content. It helps them recognize journalistic article, opinion pieces, sponsored content, or even propaganda and disinformation. But it goes broader than that. As such, media and information literacy is an umbrella term that covers skills and competencies that help people understand their information needs and better search, find, evaluate, use, contribute to information and media content. And in times of elections, media and information literacy promotes a more informed and democratic society. So concretely, a voter that has media and information literacy skills should be able to do the following thing. One, this voter should be able to evaluate and analyze media content and information and recognize when it's been powered by artificial intelligence. Number two, the voter should be able to navigate this information and differentiate between reliable news and misleading content by checking the sources and checking the veracity of content. Number three, an MIL skilled voter should understand how algorithms work and influence the distribution of information on digital platforms. Number four, an MIL skilled voter is able to identify hate speech and discriminatory narratives, and they know how to respond to it, how to be resilient, and how to promote respectful discourse. Number five, 
a voter with media information literacy skills know where to search information that is trustworthy and he knows how to check the sources and, and knows that it's important to look at different perspectives. This voter can critically assess media sources and considering the reliability, the transparency and fact-checking practices. Six, a voter with media information literacy skills can share information online responsibly and avoid the spreading of, of false information. They verify facts before amplifying content. And last, such a user engage in civic discussion online and contribute to inform debates. Now, providing such skills to voters is an endeavor that requires the involvement of many stakeholders, including the government, election supervisory bodies, to media, civil society organization, and digital platforms. There are two types of actions that are needed to empower people with media information literacy skills. Users need A, capacity building, and B, they also need some tools to navigate the online world. For instance, a watermark to distinguish content that has been produced by humans from content generated by AI. But to push for the development of such tools and such capacity building and monitor the deployment and the impact, we also need clear policies. At UNESCO, we've been promoting the development of media and information literacy policies, and we are currently witnessing a very positive trend where an increasing number of countries are adopting measures to integrate media and information literacy as part of formal education into curricula, but also to give responsibilities to media regulators in this area. This is part, partly, uh, we know that that is partly motivated by the urgency to build resilience to some of the threats of generative AI. In Europe, the regulator is now requested to report on a yearly basis on their media and information literacy work, and they are also monitoring what digital platforms are putting in place to empower users. And in that respect, this year, which is the big year of, the, of elections, some of the biggest digital platforms have developed dedicated resources, hubs, and platforms on media information literacy for elections. These online election centers have in some countries partnership with electoral commissions and fact-checking organizations to provide users with trustworthy information about voting and election. Regarding capacity building, UNESCO has developed a comprehensive model curricula on the information literacy for educators and learners. This research has already been translated in nine languages and it can be adapted further and localized at national level, depending on local needs. This curriculum includes some parts related to artificial intelligence, but it's still very important to highlight that AI literacy and integrating AI, uh, media information literacy into AI, it's still at its infancy. AI literacy comprises both data literacy or the ability to understand how AI collects, clean, manipulates, and analyzes data, and algorithm literacy or the ability to understand how AI algorithms find patterns and connections in the data. According to UNESCO's education sector, to date, there are only 11 governments in the world that have developed an AI curricula. So, as I was just saying, we're just at the beginning. But now, as voters develop AI skills to navigate the AI-powered digital world, it's also crucial to recognize that responsibility also lies with AI developers. They are the ones that shape the AI world we move in, and so they should also possess media and information literacy skills to integrate it into the design of artificial intelligence. If people are empowered with media and information literacy skills, AI can be an ally and it can serve citizenship, and it can facilitate the user empowerment. In fact, artificial intelligence can be used to develop tools to empower users with media information literacy skills. It can, it can support personalized e-learning. It can help develop solutions to detect online harmful content. It can help to cross-reference sources of information. And in that respect, and to conclude, I, I mean, I encourage you to have a look at our new global policy brief on integration of AI into uh, integration of media information literacy into the responses to generative AI to make sure, please make sure to check it out. 
Thank you and bye bye.